In the last video, I was testing RCA Interconnect and found out it's completely useless to use pricey ones. Today, let's have a gander at pricey USB cables and let's find out if they're worth the money or not. I've got some suspicions how it's gonna go, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. If you're not into listening vinyl records, reels or CDs, but you fancy listening to music through your PC, you may find this video useful. Companies sell USB cables mainly to connect a PC to a DAC. They claim that cables improve audio signal, dissipate noise, etc. These are bold claims since the USB transfer is digital and on top of that is synchronous. So before I start testing them, let me explain how the USB transfer works. As I said, the USB transfer is asynchronous. In contrast, for instance, SpeedIF, which is synchronous. The synchronous transfer uses a continuous stream of data including the timing information to make sure transmitting and receiving devices are in sync. This method needs a precise clock on both sides, otherwise you may get garbled sounds and all sorts of unpleasant shit. In the asynchronous transfer, a transmitter sends encoded data packets, which are then reconstructed in a receiver using receiver's own clock, so it doesn't rely on syncing a transmitter and a receiver. Moreover, the USB doesn't have an error correction, it's got only an error detection. Which means when a receiving device receives some data, it checks the data integrity and if the data is damaged or incorrect in any way, it won't repair it, it just drops the data and doesn't use it at all, which means there's either correct data or no data. So, in the audio world, it means a DAC produces either exact music that came out of a media or no music at all. I hear some people yell, and what about Jetta? Well, the jitter is basically an inconsistency between a receiver's and transmitter's clock, and since the USB transfer doesn't rely on a sync between a receiver and a transmitter, like for instance the speed if does, it simply can't introduce any jitter whatsoever. If the receiver's clock is rubbish for whatever reason, which most probably never is nowadays, the sound may get slower or faster than it should be, but you can't get any jitter. Firstly, I'm gonna measure the noise flow of the cables to find out if there's any difference in this regard. Then I'm gonna try creating a hostile environment and making some noise by entangling the cables into this ball of adapters, chargers, power cables, etc. and redo the measurements. Another test is gonna compare tracks recorded with all the cables if there's any difference between the signals or actual music that's coming out of the deck there is. For this test, I'm gonna use Delta Wave program which compares two audio samples and spits out a difference. I'm gonna record tracks of actual music with all the cables and compare the output. I've done this previously in my RCA Interconnect test. To show you how it works, I've recorded a song with an old sound blaster and then with my RME DAC. Since they produce slightly different signal, this is what the difference sounds like. I reckon there would be a less of a difference, but at least you could hear how it works. If different cables produce different signals, we should be able to hear something similar. Or at least something. If there's just silence, there's no difference between compared recordings whatsoever. If it results in some sort of hum or noise, there is a difference, but most probably in the shielding. And if there's audible bits and bobs of music, there's certainly some sort of difference between the signals. Then I'm gonna perform pretty much the same test, but using completely different system. You may be asking why? Well, the first system is a modern, high-end system, latest motherboard, CPU, VGA, DAC, etc. So it should be relatively free of noise. And I was thinking, what about some older system with early USB implementation? And I came up with this. Pentium 1 motherboard, which is one of the first motherboards that had USB, Windows 98 with earliest USB support, and Roland SCD70, which is one of the first decks ever produced. Theoretically, this system should be horrible and prone to all sorts of computer noises, so it should benefit from a better cable, shouldn't it? I'm gonna compare three cables. Once again, a dirt cheap cable for about a quid or so, a cable that came with my RME ADI deck, and the Cord Serum for £2100. One last thing before I start testing the cables. The RME ADI deck is capable of playing back sound in 768kHz and 24 bits, which is quite a lot and I was wondering if the cheap cable can handle such large data transfers. Long story short, it works alright. Now to the test. The dirt cheap cable's noise floor looks like this. 
There's nothing particularly interesting about that alone, but since it's a cheap cable, the noise floor should be somewhat higher than using the more expensive cables, right? Uh, wrong. Well, as you can see, the noise floor is pretty much the same with the RME cable, and when I add the cords to the equation, no difference whatsoever. Now let's try making some artificial noise by putting the cables in this mess. It was quite effective in my RCA video, but it was an analog signal and this is digital. Let's speed it up a bit. It was exactly the same as before with all three cables. I've recorded five tracks with all three cables and put them in delta wave. As I said before, delta wave compares two signals and spits out a difference which can be played back. The difference between the cheap and the RME cables looks like this. It's completely flat, showing there's no difference between the signals. Now let's compare the cheap cable and the cord. And again, no difference whatsoever. I tried the same thing with all five tracks to cover all possible frequencies, and the results were exactly the same. But what about the old system? Well, as expected, the noise floor is a lot worse than that of the modern system, but let's see if the expensive cable helps. And as you can see, it really doesn't matter what cable is used. It doesn't affect the noise even a little bit. What about the music test, you ask? Well, surprise, surprise, a flat line. There's one thing I also wanted to address, these stupid directional arrows. Not only it's a bloody nonsense for a cable, but since it's a USB AB type cable, you can't even connect it the other way around to a DAC, which this cable is made for. To wrap this up, as well as RCA cables, it's utterly useless to spend money on pricey USB cables. Just use whatever cable came with your DAC and you're set. Selling a cable for £2100 is extremely scammy, and it's not even the most expensive one. Don't support scammers like Cord, AudioQuest or Nordost. Spend your money on something that actually matters. So, see you next time. Ta-ta, bye.